Turn your hearing aids on. <laughs> okay. Everybody ready? <laughs> All right, page 28. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the Oh, uh -huh. 
singing, Bryson. Do y'all have little ones? Y'all sing some? Let me drop this down here real quick.
sing one or two. I want to. I uh, would love to hear you. I'm just going to kind of put this midway between the big ones and the little ones. It should pick up pretty good.
times uh, over the last few years uh, and they're uh, they're uh, preparing to go on a mission to Utah I'll not really get into that with you I'll let uh, brother Joseph if he's lived that way and uh, I'm not going to try to tell him what to preach but he is going to preach for us this morning uh, but I'm glad to see you this morning glad to see you here glad the Lord's given us another good day of course that's the only kind the Lord makes it makes good days uh, some of them are full of sunshine, some of them rain, some of them trials, and some of them deliverance. But all the Lord makes is good days. I'm glad to see you here on this day. Uh, I, we're going to continue to meet out here on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights uh, until May the 15th. So that's uh, about a week and a half, two weeks away, something like that. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and honor uh, that that's been put before us. We're not prevented from assembling. And so we'll go ahead and assemble in this manner. But I am looking forward to the days when we could go back inside the building. Uh, but until then, invite your friends and neighbors just like you would any other service. Invite them to come on out here. Uh, and we're going to worship the Lord and learn of Him and His Word, uh, whether it be inside or outside. We'll do that. But right now, I'm just going to ask Brother, uh, Brother Hedrick if you'll come and give us whatever the Lord has given you. Preach the word. All right, it's good to be with you this morning. Thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy. We are the Hendrick family. We are going to the state of Utah. Some people say, well, why are you going to the state of Utah? Because the area we're going, they don't have a church like this. They don't have an independent Bible-believing church that stands on the King James Bible. They don't. They don't have the gospel. Right. They don't. They don't have the good news, and so they need it. I mean, the area will be in is eighty-seven thousand people. I mean, could you imagine that eighty-seven thousand people who who do not hear? So most people say, "Well, that's Mormon country." Yes, it is. But Mormons are no different than. Any other religion? That's right. Uh, they're just a religion. They're they're just believing in a false a false god. They are not a Christian religion. Right. They do not believe in the Jesus of the Bible. And some people say, "Well, can Mormons get saved?" If I can get saved, they can get saved. That's right. Amen. Um, I was deceived most of my life thinking I was saved and on my way to heaven from the age of 7 to the age of almost 20. But I'm thankful that the Lord began to do the work and not man. Right. And I'm glad the Lord, the way the Lord saved me. I, I'm ashamed to know that the life that I lived, uh, but I grew up in a church where a lot of times man would try to save me. Right. And God saved me on out the outside of the church house. Amen. The night that I got saved, I was coming down the road and he saved me. 
Amen. And uh, and then he took me into the church house. That's good. Uh, and so man couldn't have a, anything to do with what God was doing in my heart. And so I'm glad for that. So if you have your Bible, turn to 1 Kings chapter number 20. I may have to fight the wind a little bit. Maybe we'll turn this way just a little. But I want to preach to you this morning on what I believe the Lord wants us to do. I was in a, a twink between two, but I think the Lord allows us to go here this morning. Uh, the Bible says here in 1 Kings chapter 20, and before I ever read, I like to pray. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for thy word. We thank you, Lord, for, for what you've placed in our heart. But God, I pray, Lord, that if, if you don't show up, there's no reason for me to do anything. Lord, I need thy spirit. I need to be filled. I, I need the words that come out of my mouth to be touched with thy sweet Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, for the hearts of thy people, and Lord, for maybe those that are here today that maybe they don't know you, or maybe in the neighborhood, Lord, that don't know you, maybe they'll hear just a little bit, and God, you can stir them up and bring them to the knowledge of the truth. And we're thankful, Lord, for what you're going to do. In the blessed holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. First Kings, the Bible says here, uh, let's start reading in verse number 30, uh, but the rest fled to Aphek into the city. There was a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city into an inner chamber. And his servants said unto him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Peraventure, he will save thy life. So they girded sackcloth on their loins and put robes, ropes on their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, is, his, is he yet alive? He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him. And did hastily catch it, and they said, Thy brother Ben Hadad. Then he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Ben Hadad came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into his chariot. So we want to preach this morning on this thought. It's a question that we can ask in our own hearts Will I find mercy? Will I find mercy? So we see here in the Bible, we see a king here. This king has come up against the Syrian army. And this, man, this man's name is Ben-Hadad. And so we find in the Bible that this king was defeated by Ahab, the king who was a wicked king. Uh, he was a wicked king, but God chose to use him. Right. And so we see here that Ben-Hadad, what happened to Ben-Hadad? He's defeated. The Bible said there in a previous verse that some of his men, of about 27,000 I believe it is, uh, they went into this city and a wall fell on them and 27,000 of them died. So all that's left is Ben Hadad and his servants. And what do they do? They go into an inner chamber into the city. They go into hiding. They're going there trying to hide away from the king of Ahab. And so we find here that they decide as they're in hiding, they said, well, wait a minute, king. They give the king a proposition. They said, king, we have heard that the kings of Israel, they are merciful kings. Right. And if we'll go before the king and we'll humble ourselves and we'll put sackcloth on and we'll come before him, we'll go out and we'll look and see what he'll do. The Bible said that they said that they would diligently observe. So they began to diligently observe all that the king would do. They went into his presence. They put the sackcloth on their, uh, on their loins. They put ropes on their heads. Uh, they came to the king. And they said to the king, that, that, that Ben Hadad saith, I, he said, I pray thee, let me live. And I'd say everybody in this world today would have probably the same, 
Same prayer if they had, a, if they had an option to God. Yes. God, let me live. That's what we ought to be, that we may live. Every person in this world today is trying to find some way to live. They're right. trying to find life in their, uh, in their life. They're trying all the things in the world. They buy everything under the sun. I mean, we've got store buildings outside of our house. Our garages will not be filled. I mean, they fill them up with stuff, and yet they still don't find enough happiness. You can go down the road. We've been traveling. I've seen one that said it was a life storage. Uh, that, that, that it was called life storage. And of all names in the world, you could put your life and store it in their building, and you would, the things that you have, they considered to be your life. The Bible shows that that's not life. Right. The Bible shows that it's not in what man can obtain or what man can have that would give him life. Amen. Even the song, the, even even the uh, the man Solomon knew that what he had was not his life. That's right. But alive, he said he came to the conclusion that to fear God and keep His commandments, yes. that was life. To fear God. But we find today in many communities of this world, in America the most, the fact of a lack of a fear of God has come upon the land. Ahab was one of those men that should have feared God. But Ahab did not fear God. Right. And God right. used this battle to try to get a hold of the attention of Ahab. God wanted him to know one thing. He wanted him to know, just like these men would know, who was in charge. Right. Their, uh, their duty was to go and find the one in charge and see how he would respond to what they asked him. Right. And it's our duty to, to go to the one who's in charge. That's right. The one who's in charge. What did he want him to know? He wanted him to know that God was the king. He said here in verse 13, he said, Now shall know that I am the Lord. The Bible said there in verse number 28, And he said, You shall know that I am the Lord. And when Hadad came up against him, this is the first part of the battle. When Hadad came and said, Give me your family. Give me your, give me your youngins. Give me your gold. Give me your silver. And what did Ahab say? Ahab said, all right, it's yours. Uh -huh. He said, it's yours, Ahab. I want to say this by the moving of the Holy Ghost, that we are letting a lot of things in this world take what we have. That is our family and our children. They're taking our children. They're taking their mind. They're taking their heart with the things of this world. But my friend, don't be like Ahab and just freefully, willfully give up your family. So the Bible says there that he goes on down and the, the man says, all right, since you've agreed to that, now I'm going to send servants to your house. I'm going to send servants to search out what you care about. I'm going to send servants that will find what you love. And uh, he said, whatever's pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hands and take it away. Right. And the Bible said that Ahab said, wait a minute. He didn't want him having what really had his heart. Right. He didn't want him to have what really was in his life. So he began to say, he said, he said to the elders and the people, he began to say, wait a minute, this guy seeketh to do me mischief. And the elders said, all right, hearken not unto him, nor consent. But it was God that was going to fight the battle. Right. It was God that was going to give the orders. It was God that was going to give the direction. And God sent a prophet down to him and told him, he said that I will deliver into thy hand this day. Ahab, all he had was 7,000 men. And the Bible said that they, they went out. And he said, he said, How, who shall order the battle? He said, thou shalt order. He said, he said, he said, by whom? He said, even by the young men, the princes of the providences. So Ahab sent out the princes of the providences and they stood and, and, and the men and, and Ben-Hadad was over in his part of the army on the other side getting drunk and he saw them come out and the Bible says that God uh, began to give them the victory through those princes and they, they slew every man that came out unto them and they took the battle and Ben-Hadad fled back to his country. Right. And they said this statement, they said, well... He may be the God of the mountain, but He's not God of the valley. I'm going to say today, though this country is, and though this world has experienced something that they've never experienced before, 
The Bible said that though he may, he's the God of the mountain. He is the God of the valley. He is the God of sickness. Right. He is the God of pestilence. He is the God that will guide us and lead us and bring us to the place that we need to be as God's people. Amen. Uh, but we find here that this man, this man, he, he, he said, well, he's not the God of the valley. And the Bible said that God came back to Ahab and told Ahab, since he said that I'm not the Lord of the valley, I, I'm just the Lord of the hills, he said, I'll give him into your hand. Right. So God used a wicked king to defeat a wicked king. Yeah. But we see here, he wanted to teach him one thing to Ahab, he was trying to teach him. And it was that, and ye shall know yes. that I am the Lord. That He is the Lord. Right. A lot of people today say, well, I'll make my own choices. No, you won't. Right. There's only two people that could be considered your Lord. You're either the Lord, you're either following the devil. He told the Pharisees, he said, you're up here following the devil and the lust of your father. You will do. Or you'll have Jesus Christ as Lord. The Bible said one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right. That He is King of kings and that He is Lord of lords. If we was to take the Old Testament, that says, He said in Isaiah 43 and 11, I even I am the Lord and besides me there is no Savior. Buddha can't save nobody. Muhammad can't save nobody. Right. There's only one God that can save somebody. Amen. And that's the Lord. That's the L-O-R-D. That's the capital Lord, the Jehovah God. Amen. That's right. And that Jehovah God said in Isaiah 45 and 22, Shall surely one say in the Lord have our righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. He said in verse 23, one verse of he said, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall, every tongue shall swear. That's right. So we just take the New Testament and put it back into the Hebrew, it was written in Greek. If we just take it and put it back in the Hebrew, we'd have to capitalize it. Hell O R D. Right. One day every knee will bow. Everybody in the community, everybody in America, yeah. everybody in the world, everybody that's died, everybody that's in hell, everybody that'll be in heaven will one day bow the knee to the God of glory and pay a reverence to Him and honor Him and cry with their lips, He is Lord, He is Lord, He right. is Lord. Right. He Amen. wanted they have to know that He is Lord. There's a lot of people today that are changing who Jesus is. Go ahead. Wanting to make a new Jesus. Uh -huh. Wanting to make a lovely Jesus to the world. Wanting to make a Jesus that everybody likes. Everybody wants to accept. Everybody wants to receive. Everybody wants to run to. I'm telling you that rich young ruler, when he ran to Jesus, he found a Jesus after he got done talking to him that he didn't want to have. Right. He said, sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come, pick up your cross and follow me. And that rich young ruler said, no, uh right. Not me, not today. So he wants us to find out who's in charge. Not only that, will he find, will this, this king is looking to find salvation. The Bible said there in verse 31, paraventure he will save thy life. They had to figure that out. They had to watch that king. They had to find out what he would say to the servants. They had to find out what he thought about uh, what, what he thought about Ahab when he said he is my brother. They had to figure out if he was telling the truth. They had to figure out who this king was and what he was saying. But they came to find that he was that he was telling the truth, and they went to get him in Ahab. So we find: will he find salvation, or will he destroy? So if he's in charge, we've got to determine who, who, what he's going to do in our life. What's God, God going to do based on what I have? We have a lot of people today that say they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good word reprobate. Right. Oh, but glory to God, there was a day. Oh, there was a day when I found salvation, when He right. came to me, when He found me. When 
he did the work in my heart, when he did the convicting, when he did the drawing, when he took the cords of love and drew me unto himself through the gospel, the good news that Jesus had died and Jesus did rose from the dead and then Jesus did shed his blood and then Jesus did pay the sin debt. But oh, thankful for that day. But they had to find it out for the king to pay that. I like to think about that. Not just want to think about that, but think about him as in the king. We, the, 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 the men were observing the king, but what was going on with the king? What was going on in his life? I can imagine in my heart today that that, that king would look at them and say, I'll make sure you observe him well. I say today, we need to make sure that we observe him well. Right. Everybody's uh, out there saying, well, there's a bunch of hypocrites down at the church. In a lot of churches there are people that don't love God. But don't look at them. Don't right. measure up Jesus to them. Don't look at this preacher this morning and try to measure me up to Jesus because he's far better than I could ever be. Right. Yes, you let you. I'm not worthy to go loose. I'm not worthy to preach. I'm not worthy to come to church. I'm not worthy to do the things that I'm doing right now. But oh, at the day, the one day that I bowed my knee to Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, you better make sure you observe him well. Not only that, we find where the king was. The king was in the inner chamber. The king was in that deep, dark place. I'll say this this morning. God knows your inner chamber. God knows the very thoughts of your heart. God knows the intents of what's going on in your life. I'm thankful today for what God's are doing. But I'm telling you, He knows the very thoughts you've had. He knew what you was doing before you came to church. He knew what you was doing this week. Maybe you're listening out there in this community. The fact of the matter is, He knows who you are. And just like Ben Hadad, the Bible said he came forth to him. Somebody brought him to the king. The king's not going to have to search you out. The king's not going to have to try to come find you. He knows where you are and you'll be brought to him. Right. You'll be brought to his throne. You'll be brought to his authority. You'll be brought to him and the Bible says you'll give an answer to the things done in this body. The Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give to exchange your soul for? You ask the Hollywood stars of today, they would say, oh, I've got all this money, but they down, down in the back side of their house, they're in darkness, they're out there killing their self. I mean, they're taking their own life because they're not happy with all that they have. But Jesus can make you happy. Jesus can put joy in his soul. Right. But first it comes with his conviction, which will bring fear in your heart. When you realize what God's looking at, when the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing even the divine of soul and sunder, I mean, it, it, it divides you asunder. It opens you up. And the light of the gospel can shine into your heart. And when it shines in, it shines what's in there. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Oh, that God would come by our way. The Bible says, No man cometh unto the Father unless the Father draweth him. The Bible says, The Holy Ghost of God is the reprover. He is the one that will reprove you of sin, will reprove you of righteousness, and will reprove you of judgment. He will bring to light the things that are in our life. That word means to approve, means to convince. Right. It means to convince. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And the evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. But Jesus said, I will say unto you that every man shall give an account for, and that every idle word that you shall speak, you shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. God's going to look at the deepest part of our heart. He's going to find our very faults. He's going to look, if I was lost today, He was going to look back at my life when I was a drunk. He's going to look back at my life and look at what I was watching on TV. 
He's going to look back at my life and see what blares on my radio in my car. Uh, the, all the things that I heard and did, that I accepted, that I made and approved with my own life, God's going to look back at those things and, and judge me in base accord of what I've done. Every fight I've been in, every curse word I've said, everything that I've done wrong if I was lost today. But my friend, I'm glad for the day that Christ came my way because He washed all my sins away. Amen. He washed all my sins away. Right. They, they, they may be in the sea of forgetfulness, but He, he did way better than that. He took the, the slate that said this is He's guilty. He took the book that said He's guilty of this and He's guilty of that. And he, he did that. And he lived that way. He silenced the accuser with my life by telling him, hey, it's clean, it's clean, it's clean. That's He's right. my son. I'm telling you today, I'm glad for that. Amen. But this man, Aphek, he had to find not only to begin to think about himself and look at his ember chamber where he's at, he had to think about the uh, the Bible says for his eyes are upon the ways of man and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. But this man was saying, King, let me live. Let me live. Let me have life. Let me have those things. How are we going to get it? Can we live good enough to get to glory? The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. They're filthy rags in the sight of God. And he said, he said, how will a man, he began to think, I think about a Ben Hadad, how, how will I die if he takes my life? Imagine what a king could do to another king oh, yeah. who has stood up against his people and killed his people. I mean, they could have hanged him. He could have took a sword. He could have burned him in a fire. He could have stoned him to death. He could have tortured him like David did with the I believe it was the Amorites that he sawed them asunder. He could have done all those things so he had to answer to himself, how will I die? What will be the end of my death? What will happen to me? And that's what we have to answer today. What will be the end of my life? What will be the end of my choices? What will be the end of what I have? What will be the end? Will it be religion or will it be Jesus? Will right. it be the things of this world? Will it be the King of kings and Lord of lords? But there is a place. And I think a lot of times preachers like myself in the past have, have made a great fear of the place. And I believe it is to be feared. The Bible says that hell is a place of burning. The lake of fire is a place of burning forever and ever. That their torment ascended forever and ever. There is a place of comfort though. That's right. There is a place of rest. Amen. There is a place that you can find forgiveness. Yes. There is a place of mercy. Yes. But will I find mercy today with what I have? We've made fear of the place, but I want to tell you, as Luke said in Luke 12, verse 5, he said, well, I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. He said, fear him who is, when, when you have died, that is able to kill your body and, and to take your soul and throw it into hell. He said, fear him. That's where we've gone wrong in our day a lot of times. We've made a fear of the place, but the place is where God has placed it. God is the God of hell. God, He designed it. He put it aside. The Bible says it's His wrath, His anger, His fury that burns right. like fire. It is His wrath that will burn like fire and brimstone. It is His anger against sin. Wait a minute. God's a loving God. Yes, He is. But He is not a loving God when it comes to the workers of iniquity. The Bible said he hated, he hated the workers of iniquity. The Bible says over there, He, he said, he said, well, uh, let's turn on it. I'm thinking about a verse and I can't get it in my head. Oh! That he, he hated the workers of iniquity. You know what the Bible says that he will abhor them? You know what the Bible tells the Christian to do? Abhor that which is evil. You know what abhor means? To hate 
to detest. And in the salvation book of the Old Testament, the last two verses of the chapter, he said, They will look upon the carcasses of the men that are transgressed against me, where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. They will look upon them, they will look upon them, and what will they see? To them, when they see them, they will be an abhorring yes. unto all flesh. There will be a hatred there in the eyes if we're saved today, one day when we look. When they see, when flesh sees those people that are burning in the lake of fire. You read over in Daniel, you'll find where the fire is. A lot of people think that hell is going to be some distant, far place. But according to God, according to Daniel, the Bible said, As the ancient day set upon the throne, a fiery stream proceeded forth from the throne, and the beast of that kingdom was thrown in that fiery stream. In Revelations, it says, and in the presence of the Lamb. They will burn forevermore in the presence of the Lamb and the angels. I'd say, will we find mercy? This life of Ben Hadad, he, he does find salvation. Listen. I mean, Ahab takes him up in his chariot, Ahab gives him life. Yeah. Ahab tells him, tells him uh, that yeah, you can live. You're my brother. Go along. And they make a covenant together. But in order for Ben Hadad to go away free, somebody had to die. That's right. And I don't lie. I told the Lord when I when I ever first preached this message, this isn't a very good example of you, but this is what He told me to preach. That that Ben Hadad was 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 set free because Ahab gave him his life, and a man of God came along, and he hid himself in the ashes, and he came up to the king of uh, uh, King Ahab, and he disguised himself, and he, he began to ask him some questions. Basically, it all boiled down to this: that, that Ahab was a he was there. He, 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 he took away the ashes, and he said, "Because you let him go free, who I had ordered to utter destruction." Is your life for his life. Right. So we find out that not only did, did Ahab have to die, but Ben Hodden's men the ones that killed him. Yes. Ahab disguised himself. Ahab went into the battle. Ahab gave it, uh, went out there to try to, to, to try to hide with Jehoshaphat. He teamed up with him while Jehoshaphat sat on the throne. But Ben Hadad said, "You go find Ahab, and you take, you put all your effort into finding that king of Israel, and you take his life." And that's exactly what they did. He was shot with a with an archer, and he went away to die. But Ben Hadad got to live. I'm telling you, that pin points me back to Jesus. Right. That there is a substitute. Yeah. That there is a cross of Calvary. There is a place of dying. But it's a place where I have to die. It's a place of the death of the old man. And a, and a new man is brought forth. And the Bible says that we become new creatures. That the old things have passed away and behold all things become new. But that old man had to die. Paul right. said it like this in Galatians 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who gave himself for me, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. The cross is a picture of death, the place of dying. It's a place of no return. It's a place where, uh, where, where you're nailed to it. He said, pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. Amen. Place of dying. And I'm here today to say I'm glad that old man died. I'm glad that spiritual old man died, that new spirit that was put inside. I'm glad I was given the Holy Ghost of God. I'm glad I was given a new heart, as Ezekiel said. And he would put a heart in me, took out the old stony heart, took out the rebellious heart, took out the one that said, No, God, no, God, I will not bow, and gave me a heart of flesh that says, I'll bow. I gave me a heart of flesh that says, I want to know him. Gave me a heart of flesh, as Jeremiah 24. He said that he said that he said, I'll give you a heart that you may know me, that I am the Lord. Amen. That's the difference in a Christian and a lost person. God changes them. God does a work on them that causes them to want the things of God. They don't want the things of the world anymore. 
I'm not saying that we're sinless or perfect. I am not sinless tonight. I am not perfect, but I desire and long to be. And one day I will be. If I find mercy, I found him because he found me. Amen. He did the work. He called me. He called me to his own. So Ben Hadad found life because of Ahab's life had to be taken. So Ben Hadad got the covenant. And I'm telling you today, there is a covenant. Yes. There's an everlasting covenant. If people would just come to him as he's convicting them, you can't come to him till he draws you. You can't pick up in your mind that I'll come tomorrow, I'll come the next day, or I'll come next week. Because you don't know that God will answer them. You don't right. know that God will be drawing them. Right. I heard a man tell me a story. He said, he said that he experienced this personally. He said that I knew a man and I knew a wife and the wife got saved. And she began to get out in the thickets there by the house and began to pray for her husband. And he was a mean old man and, and he didn't like and he didn't like the things of God. And she began to pray and began to pray and began to pray. And conviction began to sit in and began to sit in and sit in. And finally that man walked out, said, and looked up to heaven and said, God, leave me alone. And it stopped. And God left him alone. He said that he met that man on his deathbed. He met him at the end of the older years of his life. He began to talk about him. He said, just don't waste your breath, preacher, because God's never dealt with me like you did there. He never dealt with me. Either. You can't play games with God. That's right. You can't come when you want to. God wants all men to come unto Him. But we know very well there's a place set aside that a lot of men are going to die and go to hell. But He desires to have you. That's right. He does love you. He does want to find you. But I'm glad that the Bible says that the foundation of God standing sure. He knoweth them that are His. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Woo! I'm glad today that you don't look at the same old preacher. I'm glad today that you don't see the same old man. That miracle work, that miracle work of salvation. Salvation means to deliver. God wants to deliver us from sin. God wants to destroy the works of the devil. The Bible said in 1 John that he was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We have to depart from iniquity. We have to repent. And repentance is a work of God. It's a grace of God. It's a work done in your heart. It's something that God does, but it's something that we must receive. Faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and repentance toward God. I'm glad for what the Lord did in my heart. I'm glad that the sin debt is paid. I'm glad I found a new life in Christ. And I used to be a wretched mess. Now, I don't try to glorify sin, but I was a drunk and a druggie and a heel head and a partier. But God can take me who thought He was saved. I, got, I made that profession at seven. That in a prayer. I hate that. I hate that with a passion. Because it deceived me for so many years of my life. But oh, thank the Lord. That God can break down the walls of darkness and break down the blinding of Satan and He can shine the glorious light of the gospel into your soul. He wants to. All men may come unto Him. I'm thankful. I'm going to pray we're going to be done. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, I love You today. Lord, I don't know the hearts of God, these that are here. I, I don't know Thy people, Lord, but You know. You know the hearts. You know lives, Lord. You know who's in the community. You 
know who made this Paul be walking down the road and just stopped and started listening to preaching? I don't know. But oh God, they're going to have to answer that question. Will I find mercy? Because there is a judgment day. There is a day of judgment. And it will come from you. You pay back when you pay when everyone pays for their sin. Love you today, Lord, and we seek to love you more in Jesus' name. There's only one way we'll find mercy. It's through the grace of God. We're going to sing about the grace of God. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. You're welcome to make an offer where you're at, or you're welcome to come forward. You're welcome to do what you need to. If you have all that you'd like to set before the Lord, now is a good time to do it. Page one. Amen. simply be dismissed. I'm going to tell you you're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Please come back to us on Wednesday night if you're able to at 6.30 uh, and we'll meet again. Until then, if you want to uh, if, if you want to uh, fellowship a little bit as long as we uh, maintain our distance, I don't see anything wrong with it. There's certainly nothing illegal with it. As a matter of fact, we see everything right with the saints of God enjoying the company of other saints of God. So Amen. you're dismissed now in the name of the Lord. Go in peace. <laughs>